I guess just about universities. I mean, it's something that I struggle with all of the time and I'm sure all of us who work in universities do is because just, of course, just by working in the university or really just by living in this world, we are of course complicit in these structures of violence that we're also trying to dismantle. And I mean, if you just think about the university, I mean, even if our, I'm not sure exactly what was meant by the question in terms of our work sort of unwittingly building your know, sort of contributing tools of empire or something, but I mean, really just by, you know, being in the university, just the way in which registration is taken in relation to international students um, and how if they don't um, submit to these registration requirements, they are at risk of, um, you know, losing their visa sponsorship and being deported. And, you know, so just by filling in those registers, um, we are participating in the violence of the border regime and our students really feel it. And they particularly feel it now in times of crisis when international students are really um, experiencing uh, essentially sort of abandonment by universities and, um, you know, uh, then also still being subject to these to, to requirements that, that, you know, can be relaxed for other students, but not for them. And um, and so it's about, I suppose, whilst being in that system, making sure that we are organizing, you know, within our unions and with student unions to try to mitigate the effects of these policies. Um, and, you know, at every opportunity challenge, challenge, challenging them in the workplace. And of course, the other one is major one is prevent. Um, again, um, universities, like um, all other public authorities that have been um, co-opted into the prevent program um, whereby a, a duty is placed on universities to um, prevent people being drawn into terrorism. And this has been, um, you know, uh, interpreted as, as, you know, allowing sort of surveillance of students, whether in prayer rooms, um, in classrooms, um, policing their events. Um, so again, by simply just being in the university space, we, we end up um, being complicit in the very kinds of um, violence and, 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 and systems that in this event we're kind of talking about um, seeking to dismantle. And it's something that I struggle with all the time because the absolute last thing I wanted to do with my life is to become a border guard. But I do feel that just by working in a university, um, that is essentially um, a task that I'm required to do on a regular basis. And I suppose it's about acknowledging that, but also not having um, any kind of naive idea that somehow universities are, eman are sort of emancipatory s places or places where, you know, um, uh, places that from which we can necessarily organize towards freedom because um, they're absolutely not that. And we're also, you know, we're seeing the sort of um, presence of police in schools and the calls for police to be in schools. We're seeing, you know, we, we've had campaigns successful in the past around getting cops off campus, but these campaigns seem to be very short lived because again, the nature of universities is like changeover of students and staff, etc. And, and we keep having to fight for the same things um, again and again. So it's about remaining vigilant, I think, within these spaces, which are really um, replete with exactly the same kinds of structures of violence. Again, they will be invested in the very same um, corporations and um, 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 that, that, that we're trying to say that we, we should be divesting from, from a, from a um, um, in terms of the sort of work that CAT does. Um, so I suppose it's about being really vigilant in our workspace um, and being really aware of that complicity. Yeah, I think I just want to uh, add to what's already been said, uh, thinking about, uh, you know, long time back when I came to US and I, uh, I, I mean, I came back to academia trying to sort of like think about Kashmir, get the space where I thought this was this, this idealistic vision of coming to the university and, you know, having scholarship at your disposal, people are going to mentor you. And then I happened to pay my, some sort of dues that I had to pay and I got a little voucher and I looked at that little voucher and I had to sign. And then the one that I was uh, keeping, I looked at top, it said merchant's copy, uh, the one that I was signing. I'm like, who is the merchant here? Because for me, the university uh, was a place which was not a merchant, but uh, that was the day when I kind of, uh, this started unraveling to me that they, universities, just as any other corporation, that's how they act, that's how they, that's how they work. And I feel like for a lot of people coming from uh, South Asia or coming from other parts of the world, uh, for lack of a better term, the third world, when they come here, they, they, they do not see university in that sense. Uh, it's more like a very, uh, we see it from a cultural viewpoint of this place that is, that is full of knowledge, emancipatory, 
potential and all of that, but we don't really see it as a business, which it is. Which it is. And I think that's something, uh, not just uh, when we talk about international students, I think that is something that needs to be uh, talked about, illustrated and manifested that this is, this is how it works and this is how it's going to affect you. And what we recently saw happening with the international students, they were really, really left in, just left out in the cold. And for so many days, despite the fact that the ICE ruling here in the US uh, had said that this had to be till the, 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 whatever the ruling was, was till the duration of the pandemic and the emergency and that hadn't yet gone away. And still there was so much panic and no one really took the care, took care to tell them what it exact actually was. So there's so much ignorance about how universities work. There's so much ignorance about, and especially with the pandemic, we have been thrown new challenges. So I feel like there has to be a lot of work has to go into uh, doing that kind of labor. At the same time, uh, international students are also the students who are involved in uh, in, in different movements. Uh, when we think about Palestine situation, when we think about Kashmir, there's a new um, movement kind of starting on campuses, which is called Stand with Kashmir. This is an organization that, that is mostly based on the diaspora, second generation Kashmiri diaspora. These, these people have come together and now they are kind of uh, trying to uh, build networks and linkages with other groups on campuses. And I think uh, the um, conversation right now is about BDS, like how do you think about India and uh, thinking about a movement like BDS uh, for India. And those are situations uh, that can be, uh, that can have a lot to take from the movements and organizations that have gone before, but at the same time there are new challenges as well. Because, uh, you, you know, the example that I gave earlier of this, this Middle Eastern uh, the, the Arab activists kind of rallying around Kashmir and now you're having this arms deal. There's so much happening so fast. Uh, I, I feel like these are conversations that we need to have, keeping everything in mind, uh, especially now pa with the pandemic, we, we don't know what's going to happen. With the universities uh, sh short of funds, there's no budget, uh, there are furloughs happening and uh, suddenly we feel ourselves that we are so power powerless to do anything. And as I, as I was speaking to you, there were emails coming, talking about this very, very thing. So on one hand, you have people wanting more campus policing because they are feeling, uh, you know, there are situations that are happening around. And at the same time, you have furloughs happening uh, where, you, where, where regular people who you need to maintain the university, they're being thrown out. So how do you deal with that kind of a situation? And then you also have a situation yourself that you might have to be go on a furlough. <laughs> and how do you deal with that? So I feel like we are in, in times where everything is moving so fast uh, and these conversations, they, they help. And, but at the same time, we have to draw some really stringent uh, networks that, that can kind of help cross-pollinate all of these ideas. Let me add a few things. So I think um, for me, the, the, the question of, of um, universities that we were just talking about a moment ago is, is kind of really crucial and something that um, it, seems, it seems that can be, you know, to some extent addressed with, with campaigning, um, given, given that students are relatively um, interested and focused on these issues. Um, so, you know, in here in the United States, um, you know, it's not always the case that it's that it's unknowing complicity, right? Like the um, the the amount the amount of university involvement in um, surveillance in defence research is huge, and and there's no it's not hidden, um, it's, it's open. Um, it, you know, it's, it, the UK does does that as well. Um, so so you know, it's there are obviously those kind of grey areas where where people aren't aware of the um, of, of their complicity, but there's a lot of it that, that's completely straightforwardly open, right? And the defense um, budget is a huge source of research uh, money in the UK. Um, you know, the, the, the amount of government money researching um, more elaborate ways to kill people 
um, is, is, is one of the, you know, if, if we measure what it is as a society we want to expand our knowledge on by how much money we spend on it, then one of the main things that, that Britain as a society seems to want to research is how to, how to kill people with more and more complicated technology, right? Um, and, and this is, you know, this connects to, I mean, I think this connects to a lot of the other things that we've been talking about. So, you know, the question of um, class, right? Like the, um, the way that we think about national security, right? This phrase national security in the UK, right? It's a little bit like the phrase law and order. Um, these phrases have been, have been presented as if they relate to the needs of ordinary people and their, and their everyday security needs, right? Like we all have a need for security. We none of us want to be victims of violence or abuse or harassment or anything else. And, and these words like law and order and national security seem to speak to that. But in fact, the word, you know, the words national security always in practice is defined as the national interest, which is always defined in terms of an elite and what it calls the national interest, which means the corporations, um, the, you know, that, that small elite of people who run the country effectively, right? Through um, running the major institutions, through the, the control of corporations and so forth, right? And so, you know, we need to be able to rethink what security might mean in a more democratic way, what it might mean for ordinary people. Um, to, to wrest control of that concept of security from, um, from the elites that currently define it and define it very much in terms of their capacity to inflict violence to defend their own property, um, both within the UK and around the world, right? Now, what does that mean in terms of practical interventions? It means that it should be a fundamental basic demand um, for any university in the UK um, that, that it has no involvement in this business of killing. Right, that 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 there is no complicity with with receiving research money from um, the defence industry to do that kind of research, and it connects to the question of of um, big uh, tech as well. You know, like um, the, what we've seen is the blurring of all of these categories. Right, so, you know, in the United States, you see this at um, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But, you know, they have a research project that partners with the phone company. Um, providing cell phone services to it's basically the only cell phone provider in Yemen and they and MIT researchers have sucked every data point uh, you know calling it big data sucking every data point from that cell phone company to do research in partnership with the US Department of Defense essentially it's a surveillance project masquerading as a as a serious anthropological ethnographic research project oh we discovered that at this time of the day everyone's cell phone location moves because they're going to the mosque oh how interesting you know it's that kind of stuff and and essentially it's going to be used for targeting drone strikes right and and so you know that kind of complicity through companies like palantir who partner with the defense industry around the world um you know we need to um we need to say to you know that universities fundamentally have to be about human liberation through knowledge to that purpose not the business of killing right and and you know it seems like student groups should be very much focused on on exploring where in their particular university or college or um, that, that, you know, there's points of possible complicity and challenging that very um, firmly, um, just as a matter of, of asserting what, you know, what, I mean, universities, of course, don't live up to the idea of what they're meant to be, but we should use that ideal and say we believe in it and we want universities to be that. We want them to be places where um, knowledge is generated for the purposes of our freedom, of our emancipation, of our liberation. I do want to say that, uh, you know, when we, when the West exports democracy, other places, uh, especially like thinking about South Asia, you're also transporting these ideas that police is an important part of this, this uh, you know, governance. You're transporting that everything that has been already given, like from 1947, whatever is in place, people think that these are institutions that can never go away. They think that this is what it is. And if they're not this, then they're not modern. So I feel like that, uh, you know, what, what student groups, what people working across solidarities can do is transport these ideas that these are not be all and end all institutions that have to be there always. There are alternatives, like people don't think about alternatives. When people uh, think about defund the police, they're like, how can that even be possible? Because they draw traditions from uh, having police in the medieval times and this and that, that this can never go away. So I think those are also, you know, these are simple things, but I feel these are important ideas 
not not for here per se, uh, but thinking about other places as well, because we are thinking about collectivities, we're thinking about solidarities. I feel like these are ideas that need to go there and and kind of like tell people that they can sometimes go away. So for example, right now, as we're speaking in Kashmir, uh, there are, uh, the police department is actually starting a plasma bank. And uh, in um, collaboration with the local uh, hospital, and the police is actually in every part of your life because they have a community project. It's just like the military humanitarianism. They have translated that into police humanitarianism. And that they have sports um, programs. They have entertainment programs. They have contests for young kids uh, to draw them away from resistance and all of that. So, and, and suddenly they're not only there because they are part and parcel of democracy, but also they are there because they're part and par parcel of this illiberal authoritarian uh, hybrid or whatever kind of governance that is. So, so to tell them that these institutions can be defunded and they can be changed into institutions of care, even though that's not a current possibility in situation like Kashmir, but just the idea and you know this transporting of ideas, I feel that's very, important and that's what conversations like these can do.